here in Milwaukee on Monday night. Earlier in the day, Nolan Ryan held a press conference to talk about going for win number 300 tomorrow night. You know, my intentions are certainly to, to try to win tomorrow night and hope that it, that it works out that way. Uh, I'd like to get it uh, over with as soon as possible. Uh, you know, I am um, disappointed that I had to come to Milwaukee to, to get a shot at it, but that's the way it worked out. And so uh, I'm looking forward to start tomorrow and hope that it works out that way. I, I'm not really anxious for this to be an ongoing deal and that uh, uh, certain number of y'all continue to uh, have to follow me around. I would like to, to make it as easy as possible on everybody. Despite the prospect of going for number 300 tomorrow night, Ryan wasn't too excited on Monday night as the Rangers went out and beat the Milwaukee Brewers by a final of 3-1. to one. In the top of the first inning, Ruben Sierra got an RBI as he went down the left field line just over the glove of Gary Sheffield. That allowed Rafael Palmero to score a double for Sierra in his 62nd RBI, and Texas led it one to nothing. In the bottom of the third inning, Mike Stanley would drop this throw on a double steal by the Brewers. Paul Molitor would go into third base on the front end of the double steal, and that set up the Brewers' only run of the game as Gary Sheffield picked it up, his 52nd RBI. A nice play by Steve Bouchelle down the third baseline and gets Sheffield at first with a long throw, but Molitor scored to tie the game at one in the bottom of the third inning. Jim Gantner used his glove to keep the Brewers in it in this game here in the top of the fourth inning. He will make the first of two great catches he had on the night as Pete Incavilla looped one down the right field line, but Gantner made a fine diving catch in short right center field. Bobby Witt would go seven innings, allowing only four hits and pick up the victory in this game, improving his record to nine and eight. There in the bottom of the fourth inning, he strikes out Greg Vaughn. In the top of the fifth inning, Jeff Kunkel will get the game-winning RBI as he hits a solo home run to left field. This came off a of Milwaukee starter and loser Bill Kruger. For Kunkel, it was his first home run of the year, RBI number seven. That made it two to one Texas in the top of the fifth inning. In the top of the sixth inning, the other defensive play by Jim Gantner was made as Mike Stanley bid for a base hit, but Gantner jumped high and caught it as he fell to the ground in short right field. In the top of the eighth inning, Texas closed out the scoring as Harold Baines picked up a solo home run, his 11th home run of the year as he hit it to center field. He almost fell down on the swing, but the ball carried out of the park. Baines' 11th home run made the final score 3-1. to one. A bit of a milestone for Baines as that marked his 200th career home run. In the bottom of the ninth inning, as you take a look at a disgusting piece of chewing tobacco with gum all over it, Brad Arnsberg will strike out Rob Deere to end the game. Arnsberg faced six batters and retired all of them. He struck out the side in the ninth inning to record his second save. Bobby Wood got his sixth straight win. He's now 9-8. and eight. Bill Kruger took the loss. He fell to 5-6. and six. John Waffen and the Kansas City Royals in Cleveland Monday night to take on the Indians. Pick it up in the top of the fourth inning. No score in the game at this time. But Gerald Perry would change that. He would belt his seventh home run of the year, a solo shot to right field, giving the Kansas City Royals a one to nothing lead. Then later in the top of the fourth inning, Pat Tabler would hit a bad hop single off of Brooke Jacoby's chest, scoring Jim Eisenreich, giving Kansas City a two nothing lead. Then later in the top of the fourth inning, a pass ball by Sandy Alomar Jr. allows Jeff Schultz to go to third base. Alomar throws the ball through Brooke Jacoby's legs, an error on Alomar. Jeff Schultz scores. Kansas City led 3-0. The Royals scored four runs in the top of the fourth. But in the bottom of the fourth inning, Candy Maldonado would get one back for Cleveland. He singles to center field, scoring Jerry Brown. Kansas City's lead was cut to 4-1. But in the top of the sixth inning, the Royals score three more times. Pat Tabler once again gets a good break. He bloops a single in front of Candy Maldonado, scoring Jim Eisenreich. This made the score 5-1. Kansas City led 7-1 after six innings. But John McNamara and the Cleveland Indians would come back. In the bottom of the eighth inning, the Indians scored three times. Here, Corey Snyder with the score 7-2. He would ground a double down the left field line, scoring Candy Maldonado and Brooke Jacoby, making the score Kansas City 7-4. Then in the bottom of the ninth inning, Jeff Montgomery would get Mitch Webster on a collision at first base between Webster and George Brett. Webster and Brett were okay after this collision. But despite this out, Jeff Montgomery would struggle. He allowed two runs in the ninth inning, and the tying and go-ahead runs were on base. But Brooke Jacoby grounded out for the final out. Jeff Montgomery picks up his 15th save. The Kansas City Royals hold on and win 7-6.
sunset at Fenway Park in Boston on this Monday evening as the Red Sox play host to the White Sox. Pick up action in the bottom of the first inning. Wade Boggs comes up and he will double off the Green Monster. This will bring home Jody Reed, RBI number 40 for Boggs. And the Red Sox go on top by a score of one to nothing as Jody Reed races home with the first run of the ball game. The newest member of the Chicago White Sox, Phil Bradley, was on hand tonight as he was sitting in the dugout next to hitting instructor Walt Reniak. There is Phil Bradley, the third man in from the left-hand side. In the bottom of the third inning, Carlos Quintana comes up and hits a solo home run over the monster in left center field. Number seven for Quintana, RBI number 44, and the Red Sox go on top by a score of two to nothing. Then between innings, going into the top half of the fifth inning, you will see the scoreboard shot of Commissioner Faye Vincent's ruling on owner George Steinbrenner, much to the delight of the Boston crowd. In the top of the sixth inning, Roger Clements will strike out Dan Pasqua looking for the third time tonight. This is the second out of the inning. He had six strikeouts up to this point. Then in the bottom of the sixth inning, Ellis Burks will come up and single back up the middle delivering Wade Boggs from second base. RBI number 50 for Burks. And the Red Sox go on top by a score of 3 to nothing. As that would end all the scoring in this ball game, as tonight would belong to Roger Clements. Here in the top of the ninth inning, he will strike out Steve Lyons for his eighth and final strikeout as the Red Sox win it 3 to nothing. Roger Clements is now 14-5 and five as he gets his second straight shutout. While Peterson takes the loss, his record drops to 1-3. and three. So once again, the Red Sox shut out the White Sox by a score of 3 to nothing. Oakland, as he picks up his 28th and 29th RBI of the year with a two-run single to center field scoring Ricky Henderson and Jose Canseco. And the A's take a 5-2 to two lead in the bottom of the 7th. The A's added another run in the bottom of the seventh to make the final score 6-2. to two. Dennis Eckersley pitched the final two innings to record his 32nd save on the year. He gets Harold Reynolds to ground out to end it. Rick Honey cut the winner in relief as 2-2. Two and two. Randy Johnson fell to 9-7. and seven. From the world of Major League Baseball, this is the long version of Great Plays. Last Tuesday in Oakland, Dave Henderson with a long run after Dave Winfield's fly ball to the gap in left center field but he makes the grab and crashes into the wall. In Texas, Yankees second baseman Steve Sachs is the first to get to Pete Incavillia's short pop-up to right field. He makes the diving catch. A nice play by the Yankees second baseman Steve Sachs, and we'll take one more look at the dive and the grab by Sachs on Pete Incavillia's fly ball. Chicago's Ozzie Guillen will come in with a couple of sparkling plays at shortstop. First takes the flip from Scotch Fletcher, Ozzy spins and fires to get Mike Belder at first base. One more play for Ozzy again. He makes the over-the-shoulder, leaping, bobbling, tumbling catch on Greg Brock's short fly ball to left field. As it hits his glove, his shoulder, and back into his glove for the out. Shows it to the ump for verification. We'll take one more look at this catch by Ozzy again, who makes two appearances in the long version of Great Plays. Jerry Reed of the Red Sox will be helped out by his non-brother Jody Reed with a diving stop over the middle on Rob Deere's rocket line drive. Greg Brock has to stay at third base, so Jody Reed saves Boston a run with the fine catch. Gene Harris with a self-defense catch on Kent Herbeck's launch back to the box, reaches up for the out and sends the run back to second base to the National League. John Smiley will also make a self-defense catch of his own. This one on Lenny Dykstra's bullet back to the mound. Smiley just covers up and makes the grab for the inning ending out. And he manages to smile a little bit after making that grab. In San Francisco, a couple of giant plays here. First, Brett Butler with the diving grab on Chris Sabo's sinking line drive to short center field. And he gets congratulations from teammate Rick Leach on the fine catch. On Chris Sabo's bid for a hit, teammate Will Clark. Monday night against the Houston Astros. Clark will make the crashing catch against the TV cameras box. But he'll hang on to the ball for the out to end the inning. Concerned teammates and concerned manager Roger Craig over to see if he's all right. 
He is. And one more look at the catch by Will Clark in New York at Shea Stadium. St. Louis right fielder Rex Hunter will make the diving stuff on Kevin McReynolds' bid for a base hit to right center field. Calls off Jose Okendo, makes the sliding catch for the out to end the inning. Two days later on Sunday, Mets second baseman Greg Jeffries will misplay Willie McGee's ground ball, but he recovers and makes a throw in the seated position to get McGee at first base. Move now to San Diego, Franklin Stubbs of the Astros. Playing first base will chase down this Joe Carter foul ball towards the stands. Franklin Stubbs reaches over at the railing for the ball, but a fan beats him to it as the fan gets the glove over Stubbs' glove for the ball. Umpire calls it fan interference, and Houston is awarded the out. We'll take one more look as the fan does beat Stubbs to the ball, but the ball was in play, and therefore the out goes to Houston. Finally, in New York Shea Stadium, a fan makes the over-the-railing catch on Ozzy Smith's foul ball and is very excited, and that wraps it up for this long version of great plays for the week ending July the 31st. No one Ryan didn't look too excited last night as he watched the Rangers take on the Milwaukee Brewers, but his adrenaline will be flowing tonight as no one Ryan will make his second attempt to become the 20th 300 game winner in baseball history tonight when he faces the Brewers at Milwaukee. Ryan failed in his first attempt at his 300th victory last Wednesday night. The 43 year old right hander was not involved in the decision when the Rangers rallied for a 9 7 win over the New York Yankees in 11 innings at Arlington Stadium. No one Ryan tonight will be opposed by pitcher Chris Basio. Well, my attitude about this game is is uh, I don't like to I don't want to disappoint people. Uh, people go out of their way. I have a lot of people that are coming in for this game, and it's it's an inconvenience, but they want to be part of it. They've uh, uh, shared in my career. They've been uh, uh, friends of mine, and they because of my friendship and their interest, they come to the game and. I want it to be a festive occasion, and I want it to uh, have the end results that I would like, and that would be for me to win the ball game. Um, I was real disappointed from that standpoint uh, in Dallas the other night because a lot of people came all over the country. The fans turned out. They had expectations of, of seeing my 300th win, and uh, nobody was more disappointed about it than I was. Ryan tonight will try to add to his impressive career statistics that include six no-hitters. His last no-hit game came last month in Oakland, and at age 43, he became the oldest pitcher to ever throw a no-hitter. His first no-hit gem came in 1973 at Royal Stadium in Kansas City. His Angels ball club blanked the Royals by a score of 3 to nothing. Two months later, his second no-hitter would be thrown against the Detroit Tigers. In all, he would throw four no-hit games for the Angels before moving on to the Astros, where in 1981 his fifth no-hitter came at the hands of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Right now, Ryan stands with a career record of 299 and 267 in his 23-year career, which started with the New York Mets and then took him to the California Angels, the Houston Astros, and now finally the Texas Rangers. The all-time leader in victories is Cy Young, who won 511 games. Possibly even more impressive than his victories and no-hitters is his strikeouts. The undisputable strikeout king, Ryan is the only player to ever strike out 5,000 batters. His current total of 5,211 strikeouts is a record that may never be broken. His 5,000 strikeout victim was the A's Ricky Henderson on August 22, 1989. So for Nolan Ryan, it's hard to rank exactly where this milestone will place on his list of career achievements. In the past, haven't reflected back on my career because uh, the demands on my time and, and uh, the things that uh, I have to do that I just stay preoccupied with that. And really, uh, my life hadn't slowed down enough to uh, to really think back on my career. And I guess because it's an ongoing thing is, is one reason I have that attitude is because I'm concerning myself with the next game or with the next season coming up and feel like I'm still in my career and don't really reflect back on it until... Uh, it's over with, and that's a part of your life that you, you have behind you. 